Hey, I'm Matreya Scarpnier. Hi, my name is Jerome Yu. Hi, my name is Kamasud, and you're watching the Permanent Rain Press. Hi everyone, I'm happy to be joined by Matreya Scarvigny. She has her coffee cup in hand. Yeah, how, has, <laughs> how has quarantine been treating you? Have you learned any new skills? Uh, not really, no new skills. I've been cooking a lot, so it's kind of like a lame skill that everyone's doing. Um, but I'm trying to be a vegetarian, so I've been cooking vegetarian food. And um, I'm, I had to move <laughs> during quarantine, which was tough because we couldn't have like like, it's just tough, like, not being able to have friends over to help you move boxes and stuff, but I'm in my new home now, so that's good. I want to talk to you about your Leo Award nomination, nominated once again, this time made for you with love as Ali. Tell me a bit about her and what it was like getting into character. Oh, Ali, I, I actually, I really dug her whole story. Like, I thought, I thought that it was super heartbreaking actually even when I I well when I auditioned for it the, the casting director like I did I wasn't initially gonna audition for it and then she sent me she's like I just got this script let me know if there's anything you want to read for and she like sent me the breakdown and I was like uh yeah I'll, I'll read for Ali I'll, I'll, I'll come in for that and the character I I mean I liked it but she, she was a lot older than me like I was 20 at the time and or 21 and the character is 28 and getting married and um her she her best friend is owns a wedding dress shop but Ali's kind of, kind of story what she's got going on for her is she's getting married she's um super excited about it and her her dad's really sick and he's got a, a terminal illness and he has to have an operation an emergency operation and she has to have like an emergency wedding before his operation, because there's only a 50-50 chance he'll make it. So um, this wedding that she's kind of dreamed of her whole life, it has to be this kind of makeshift, like, quick day where it's really sad. Um, so, yeah, <laughs> that really bothered me. I was like, Jesus, like, that was supposed to be a happy rom-com. But, um, yeah, it was so much fun. Like, I, I feel like I had just had so much, just, we just had the most fun the entire time. You know, like everyone, like I, I had a bunch of my buddies, like my friend Adil, who's like a very dear friend of mine, was also in the movie. And uh, Lucy Guest, the director, is, she's so smart and she's hilarious. And she's like, she, she was like, you know, just have fun. Like, just like, like we, it, we, it had to be shot so fast. Like we, we moved through the whole, it was 12 days and we had moved through the whole thing so fast. But she was just like, she always kept the spirit of fun alive of just like, you know, she was like improv, like have, you know, have fun with it um so yeah it's it's it was good memories it was just like when I think of that movie I'm like oh man good times you know yeah and then yeah. now you're like oh I wish I was back on set working yeah <laughs> um, but Ali as you mentioned she's getting married I was gonna say I rewatched the the trailer part like multiple mm -hmm. times so I'm like is that her in a wedding dress that was a first for you right <laughs> as one of your yeah. characters it was so much fun I got to wear a wedding dress I got to wear a huge pregnant belly I was pregnant. I've always wanted to do that. I've always wanted to play a pregnant person so I could wear a huge <laughs> belly. And I was like, knowing, I was like, well, considering this, I'm like, I'll play some teen mom sometime. <laughs> no, I'm like pregnant on purpose. Like, wow. And so you know, the fun. next step is soon you'll have like that family of your own next year, <laughs> 2021. <laughs> one day yeah maybe when I don't look 12 well, but we'll see <laughs> so you were talking about 2019 was such a busy year um let's talk about couch potatoes super topical right now tell me a bit about the web series it was the same team behind Andy the Great Andy. yeah I can't believe that. when you said that I was like oh yeah it was it's my buddies uh Josh and Dave who who directed um Andy the Great and they were just like let's do this. Like we can, we can make something this time. Let's make it happen. And, um, there's five episodes and it's just like, it, like each one of them is my favorite. Like they're all so, so like, and I, it's, it's really cool to like see your friends in, in, in like in their element, like really shining. Like, uh, my partner's in one of them and his episode, like it's everyone's favorite. Like he's so funny. And then like my friend Anisha is in it. And, um, my buddy Charlie, who's like hilarious, he's in the first episode, I think, and yeah, and it's all done with with Clive Holloway, who's also in in Andy, and yeah, I think comedy and friendship, like that's the best pairing when you get to do comedy with your friends. How much of it was was it all scripted, or was some of it improv oh, as well? 
All scripted. Yeah. Yeah. It was all scripted. I mean, it was, Josh kind of sent me, sent it to me like two days before we started shooting and I did my best to have it all. Like there might be a couple words, but yeah, essentially yeah. all scripted. And my episode is with my real dad. Just like it's you like and him. your real mom and uh, Andy the Great. <laughs> yeah. Both my parents. Yeah. 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 It was really funny. So you play Danny. Mm -hmm. Danny's just trying to cope and I think like that was a great thing about all the episodes is that like Gen Y, Gen Z, it's not that people are necessarily super uneducated but they just don't know what it's like to live in this pandemic so like coping, yeah. trying to stay socially connected. Um, so do you think that you would reprise that character like any new episodes upcoming? Have they oh, told you anything? Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, Josh sent me a text a couple weeks ago. He's like, hey, Season two, are you down to do another episode? I'm like, of course. And, um, yeah, I don't know if he's, I'm, I'm sure he's still just working on it. And, yeah, we'll see. Or, or I, I, maybe he was like, actually, I changed my mind. <laughs> Sorry to try out, Could be ironing out ideas, you know, changing yeah, times. Yeah. It's important to kind of um, keep the characters, but different storylines. Yeah, was it the, ha the hair system one? That one was hilarious. Yeah. Yes. Right? Um, we need a follow-up to that like it's been a, it's been a few weeks so where's that shipment I 100% agree oh Doga just left I wish he was here <laughs> let's talk about Andy the Great there's a distribution deal for it to appear on tv in um, Ireland but how about yeah. Vancouver I I mean I don't know I'm uh I know that Josh and Dave are like working hard I think it's 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 tough to get distribution. It's tough to figure it all out. Is there, it's Josh's first time producing. He'd never written anything before. He was just like, I'm going to make a movie. And because he sucks, he's really just naturally good at it. And I hate him for it. But like, yeah, he just was like, I'm going to write a movie. And I think it's, I think it's a hard time. I think they, um, but th it's, it's going to happen. I, I think that it'll find its home in Canada for sure. I love it. I, it's close to my heart. So. Yeah, we really look forward to seeing it. You mentioned you are co-parenting. Nube <laughs> got yeah. it right on the Zoom stream, Nube. Nube. So um, she's just over one and a half. When you do get to hang out with her, what do you like to do together? Uh, we go on hikes. We cuddle. We uh, play tug of war. She loves tug of war. We go to the park. She runs around. She... Um, Sometimes she attacks other dogs because she's, like, a damaged rescue. But I don't think she's attacking them. I think she's just, like, really playful and she just wants to play. So she's, like, she'll go up to a dog. She's like, hey, what's up? And the dog's, like, some, I don't know. Sometimes I have to watch her. But she's, like, the sweetest dog in the world. If it yeah. was the secret life of pets, that's what she would be saying. Hey, what's up? Yeah. She's like, hey, what's up? <laughs> so Hi, I'm new Calvin Klein is creating a new perfume, the Matreya. Describe your <laughs> signature scent. Um, okay, I think it's, like, you, you know, in something, I think it would be pretty balanced. I really like scents that are, like, they, they have a sweet element, but they also have, like, a heavier element, you know what I mean? Like, something kind of, like, 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 something musty, like, maybe, like, like, jasmine or something, because it's kind of, like, sweet and also has that, like, like, kind of, I don't know, it's not, it's, like, grounded, if that makes sense. Hi, Kama, how's it going today? I'm doing good, how are you? I'm doing good, thank you. Uh, as you mentioned, everyone's sleep schedule might be a tad off, but you know, what have you really been up to during this quarantine period? Uh, so I've been doing some writing. Uh, I've been I've been, de been developing my first feature film. Uh, it's been a challenge because I definitely consider myself more of a director rather than a writer. So, um, um, you know, writing a whole feature like film, that's a lot of content. It, it takes time and I've been uh, getting help on it and such, but that's primarily what I've been focusing on. Well, we'll talk a bit about that later. First off, let's start with uh, your Leo Award nomination, Best Student Production, Glory Days. Tell me a bit about the short film. Oh, thanks. Yeah, so Glory Days is the story of a washed up rock star who's forced to confront his past when he meets this mysterious young woman. Um, I was inspired to make it by viewing people who you know, have had everything in life. They live the rock star life, whether they're a famous like rock star or actor or whatever. And then everything just crashes and burns and they weren't really grateful for what they had. And now they're back at the bottom. And it's kind of a thing where when you're on top of the world, you don't expect to go back to the bottom, but it does happen. So people don't really plan for that or think about it. So when it does happen, it's, um, 
it's not very fun. So um, that's primarily what I was inspired by, by witnessing people who had everything in life and then just seeing it all go away. Um, and um, I myself, I, I'm a musician myself. Uh, my, my uncle is a musician. Uh, my dad and aunt are both actors. So I was kind of, and I'm, and I'm a very artistic family. So I always wanted to make a film where I could blend um, music into it as well. Not just, you know, through original score, but make it a story like that revolved around music as well and such. And uh, the film stars um, Benjamin Ratner and uh, David Lewis and Laura Lyle. What was it like working with uh, the core cast? You just mentioned Ben, David, Laura, having them breathe life into your characters because for this short, you did write and direct it. Well, it's interesting because working with Ben Ratner, I had no idea upon casting him that uh, he used to be in a band. It, it was quite, I was, it was so ironic. I just had no idea upon casting him. I casted him because I saw him in a film uh, when I was a kid called Fathers and Sons, which I thought he delivered a really great performance in, and I'd always wanted to work with him. So I wrote this character, which was essentially made for him. Um, I, If he didn't take, I would have considered other actors, but it was primarily made for him. Um, so when I learned upon uh, starting to work with him that he used to be in a band, I was like, well, this is just meant to be. Um, yeah, and you know, Ben really cared about his character and he really cared about the script and the whole movie as a whole, not not just himself. So, you know, that was really fun to work with. And David Lewis, um, I had worked with him on my last short film called The Bus Stop. And I love working with David. He's just such a, he's such a good collaborator and he's a good guy. And you know, great, obviously Ben and David are both fantastic actors. And the work with Laura was just amazing because like she was a student at the time, while Ben and David have both been industry professionals. So, but Laura, when you watch performance, you would have thought that like her performance is on par with them. So you, you would have never guessed that she was like a recent grad at the time. And, you know, she really, that's, she also really cared about her character and we put a lot of work into it. And uh, yeah, this working with this cast was quite fantastic. So you are a CAPU grad from the Motion Picture Arts program. How has the school supported you and your productions? Well, it's interesting because Glory Days and Bus Stop were both made through Capilano's Off the Grid program, which is essentially a program they have at CAP where you pitch the head of the program an idea for a film when you workshop the script and then eventually he greenlights you for production. So uh, these, take, these films take place in the summer. Um, and I think what's interesting about doing those films is that um, there's a lot more, you can spend a lot more time developing the films. So, you know, I developed the script there, you know, they gave me the gear, you know, I, you know, I was able to use the Capilano name and all that stuff. So, you know, they've got a lot of uh, good connections when it comes to the city districts uh, for permits and such. So, you know, they, um, they essentially like did everything and they've supported my uh, journey so far incredibly well. Um, and I don't know... I don't know how I would have made these films if it weren't for Cap, actually, because no, they didn't just give me gear like a lot of other film schools can do. You know, they really developed my um, my script. Like I was I was working with Michael Toma, who's the chair of the program, and he workshopped the script with me. And it's a pretty vigorous process work, uh, workshopping a script with him. But in the end, it always turns out really well. Something very interesting. You went to Cambodia to work on a PSA. So uh, tell me a bit about that experience. I can't talk about that project yet. Okay, <laughs> but um, you were posting stills from your time over there. So if you take the project away, that must have been just a very eye-opening trip for you. Yeah, going to Cambodia was interesting because we were going there for, well, originally my dad just wanted to take me to Cambodia. It's a place that he always wanted to go to. Um, but we actually also ended up working on a project there, which is currently in post-production right now and should be coming out fairly soon, actually. It is um, with Beyond Borders. I think you did mention that before. Yeah. 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 It's worth it's with Beyond Borders. Um, they're a charity based out of Winnipeg, I believe, fighting the uh, sexual exploitation of children. Uh, so it's a really important project and a really important company. Yeah, it just must be um, rewarding knowing that your work as a filmmaker, like you're still starting out, but getting the opportunity to work on a project that has really global uh, implications. Now let's talk a bit about the feature film you said you're currently working on. What details can you share? So um, yeah, I can't give too many details about it yet just because it's still very early in the works. I did a draft, read it, realized I need to rework the whole thing. Uh, but the, um, the idea behind it is about an immigrant family coming to Canada in the 1960s uh, and the struggles that come with that. I think that's kind of similar. It ties into the bus stop, your themes of kind of family and culture and just um, everyday situations. Uh, so we have one last question, our signature question. If you could be any ice cream flavor, which would you be and why? Cookie dough, because it tastes awesome.
Congratulations on the four Leo Award nominations for Idols Never Die. The story is about a K-pop star, fandom, friendship. Why did you want to tell this story? Uh, yeah, I think I was obsessed with K-pop growing up. Um, and that sort of obsession came with uh, my Korean international friends that I uh, became close with through middle school and high school. Um, it was like really interesting to see how um, for a lot of these Korean students that came over from Korea to study English, um, not only did they struggle with having their own community and their friends because of the language barriers, and um, I found that a lot of them felt really lonely being so young and being away from home. And one of the only things that they could latch onto was uh, Korean music and uh, specifically K-pop music, which was still a huge um, trend back then. And um, becoming friends with these international students, they introduced me to K-pop and it was really interesting because their sort of obsession with it and there's like different levels of obsession for K-pop. Uh, uh, it definitely like rubs off on you and um, Idols Never Die specifically, I made it about high school um, girls because just knowing this specific group of friends back in high school and seeing this sort of frenetic youthful energy that came out from them just fangirling over k-pop stars i just thought that it's so interesting to like see that energy and it's like a different energy from like girls obsessing over like you know um like in the west like over justin bieber or um sort of other um celebrities and icons over here it's uh maybe it's because of this like specific korean energy about it I just felt like it's it's an energy that like I that I remembered and it was like uh something that I definitely wanted to recapture and tell. So that's kind of how Idols Never Die started. And more specifically, it's about four girls and this fan club. And I remember this one friend that I had. I remember it was like something about like her having to take an exam at school, but there was this like big news out of Korea about this one K-pop band that um, like was just releasing their album. And she ran like this uh, blog, I guess, right? Like a fan page. And um, it was like a pretty big fan page for that specific group. And she had purposely skipped school so that she could match like the time zone with Korea and like, you know, um, write it like, write up her like blog posts on time and make her like press releases on time. And I thought that was just like, wow, like that's like some next level stuff, like skipping out on school and, um, yeah, some of these girls are like really reliant on just like their music to find comfort and to disconnect from the struggles of reality. And I thought that was an interesting story to um, explore. Yeah, so you captured that dedication. You co-wrote it with uh, Andrea Bang. So what mm -hmm. was it like kind of collaborating? Had, had you worked together before? We haven't worked together before. Um, Andrea and I are friends. So uh, I thought that Andrea, just her sense of humor um, obviously, like, even though I'm not a girl, I thought she would be able to sort of um, really, like, keep me on track of, like, what is the right perspective, how, like, girls would behave in this scenario in a truthful manner. And, um, yeah, like, I had approached her because I just thought that our senses and our style would really just mesh well for a story like this. It's a bit outlandish and over the top sometimes even though we try to keep it as grounded as possible and i think it's so great because like even remembering back to my like school days and like knowing like my friends they were so over the top like all the time um so in, the, in a way it's like grounded and believable and andrea always like kept me on track um it was just like such a great experience to write with her like through and through so collaborative so fun in all their sessions um She's fantastic. So you created original K-pop tracks for the short film. Who are some specific artists that inspire you? Hmm. Um, shout out to Net Kim, our songwriter and composer for those awesome tracks. Uh, I feel like I grew up in a different generation, like to like what all the popular K-pop stars are now, like BTS and Blackpink are obviously huge. Uh, I feel like back then I grew up with uh girls generation or big bang big bang is still popular but i think for myself i've really liked this band called epic high they're kind of like a rap band 
and um, they were a bit different from like the sound that you hear today, but uh, I've always listened to them. Uh, yeah, listened to them a lot. <laughs> We know that the film has done, I think, rounds at Crazy Eights, different film festivals. Can we expect a wider release in the coming months? Ye- I, I think no, actually. <laughs> um, as much as I would like to, yeah. but we're under contract with our distributor at Traveling, who has been so amazing for us. Um, so I don't think it'll be op- like available publicly for another maybe four years or something like that. One day. Another project you worked on last year was Recess Third Street Mm -hmm. uh, that you uh, filmed in Vancouver with a lot of your friends. So what was it like bringing TJ and the gang into high school? Oh man, it's like a dream come true. Uh, I loved Recess growing up. It's like one of my all time favorite shows. And like every year since I was like younger, like I'd hear rumors like, oh, Disney's like possibly doing like a live action like thing because it has like a cult following, right? And and it never came. So once I like started filmmaking, I just like had this crazy idea. Oh, like what if I just made like a small little fan film, but like super like dope, you know, like just like actually like make it as legit as possible. And so, um, yeah, I started like playing with that idea of like what it would look like to make a live action recess, like how I would play it, because obviously in the cartoon, they're elementary school students. And um, knowing the resource that, that I had, and also um, it being super freaking difficult to shoot with kids, especially with all the uh, rules in place, I decided to make a high school re-adaptation. And um, yeah long story short it was like one of the most fun shoots i've ever had because literally everyone on board was number one a fan of the show and they just wanted to be a part of it because of them being fans themselves and number two it was like literally all friends that was on set and just like that energy on set when you're like just having fun with friends it's like i don't think anything beats that so um yeah like we got it together like in such a short span of time uh shout out to my co-writer uh zlatina pasheva and my uh producer kent Dongwins. um they definitely helped me push that to uh make it happen and um also just like my supportive friends that just uh wanted to show up and wanted to be a part of it they're all um you know they're all working actors and uh this was like a really small passion project that i want to put together so i really appreciated everyone showing up at the end, uh, without saying what happens, it does kind of leave it open-ended. Is this something that you would like to revisit more of? Oh, I would love to revisit more of it. Uh, yeah, like we even like wrote this, like, like not each script, but like we wrote a 10 episode arc, Zlatina and I, and we were like, oh, if anyone wanted to continue like our passion project, uh, make it bigger or I don't know, even if like we kept it like small, like we did with like the first episode, like I just think it'd be like so much fun. And um, I would love to make more of it. Definitely have some interesting episodes planned out. Uh, It's just a matter of budget and time, I suppose. Yeah, hopefully uh, next round of funding for some of those projects maybe. Yeah, it's like Richard Harmon uh, who plays King Bob. We, okay, so you had tweeted out, it was like, it's someone scandalous. And then I was thinking right away, I was like, is it Richard Harmon? And it. (laughs) How did you guess that? Because he's like Vancouver's most, I don't know, scandalous actor. actor. (laughs) He's he's a funny guy. We've talked to him like many times. So like, we're just thinking that could be an ideal casting. And I think we knew that you were like friends. Yeah, so so funny because like we had a rap party um, afterwards and Richard couldn't make it because he watched uh, Midsommar and he was like, this movie has damaged me. Like, I can't come out and party tonight. So then... (laughs) I was I was at uh, Pacific Center and uh, he and I like randomly like ran into each other and we never touched base after the project and he was just like let's get some champagne like so spontaneously I'm like okay and then yeah we just like drank a lot of champagne and um, it's just you know like that only happens with Richard is what I'm trying to say.
Um, you mentioned you have been writing a lot. So what kind of projects have you been working on? Are you trying to do another short or maybe a full length? So I'm working on my feature length uh, feature right now, which I uh, finished writing back in March. Um, it's called Mongrels. It's about a Korean immigrant family uh, that moves to rural Canada and tries to uproot themselves and sort of the struggles and victories of that uh, back in 1998. So yeah, like I try to utilize like my lens as a uh, Korean Canadian because uh, I grew up very Canadian, but also very in tune with my Korean side. So those are stories that I'm really interested in and I want to keep going with that. And we have our signature question for you. If you could be any ice cream flavor, which would you be and why? I feel like I want to be multi-layered and have different flavors and different toppings on me. But like, I feel like the base should be like mango because I love mango. And then, and then maybe a little bit of strawberry because I like to think I'm sweet or... <laughs> I don't know. And then like a little bit of chocolate to make it like really decadent and um, little like sprinkles of like coconut flakes and maybe a little bit of like uh, oatmeal or some or granola, you know, to keep it a little bit healthy, a little healthy, sweet, decadent, fruity, a little bit of everything. <laughs> <laughs> 